may be seated. Wonderful Jesus. Thank you. I gave you an assignment, right? And I said there is a scripture that I would, I, would, I would want you to go home and read. What book and what chapter was that? What is it? Genesis, Genesis chapter? Six. From the first verse. We are dealing with the subject of demons. Okay? Demons or... We are dealing with the spiritual life. It's a, it's a spiritual, because there's a script that I gave you last time when Paul said, we are not I would want you to be ignorant of the spirituals. That was the actual word there. I don't want you to be ignorant of spiritual matters. Okay. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair which means they were beautiful and they took them wives of all which they chose and the Lord said my spirit shall not always strive with men for that he also is flesh Yet his days shall be in 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. I don't know how many times you have read that one, but I thought it was going to be very wise for you to also try to do your own separate research and to try to find out how complicated it is to give an interpretation to that particular chapter. So that you will appreciate when I spend more time trying to justify, trying to defend, trying to quote scriptures. You will understand why I'm spending so much time into all that. Because by then you will have known that it's a controversial subject or controversial uh, portion of scripture. When a man of God comes to you, and he is presenting a case which is critical and you are not even aware of how critical it is. It will never make sense to you why he's spending much time in trying to explain this and trying to explain that. It's a critical subject that we are dealing with. So I, I promised to really take my time and explain in detail to you how the spirit operates, what is happening in the atmosphere, what are the spiritual activities that we can't see from where we are. So I want this thing or this subject to be really understood. That's why I'm trying by all means to take it slowly and we'll have a time of questions and answers. So, Understand, it's not all about having an examination, no, but knowing how the devil is operating and how demons are operating, it gives you an advantage over the enemy. Because when you're sitting in one place and you see something happening on a different place, you are able to come up with answers and reasons. Because there is such a thing, we once spoke about it, which they call cause and effect. Things do not just happen. There is no such a thing as a coincidence. Things are properly planned. 
things are falling into their intended positions and things are happening right on time. Things are dictated from the spiritual realm. We don't have events in unfolding just like that without anyone being behind those events or being in control of what is happening. So I want you to please stay with me on this wonderful journey of studying the spiritual activities, whether these um, spiritual people are godly people or evil people. Let's talk about the spiritual. It gives you an advantage to understand, to know when things are happening the way they are happening. I once gave you a very good example at how can we have a bus that is maybe traveling from Mutare coming to Arari and we have another person, another driver who is also driving his own private car from Harare going towards Mutare. And there is a place where they have to meet somewhere maybe after Rusape. And there is a head-on collision. Why? Just because of a tire burst. And then because of a tire burst, the bus driver could no longer control the bus and it veered off the road, right? And then it eventually encroached into another person's land. And therefore, there is a head-on collision. Why these things, you see, how can a tire just best right at a time when somebody is on the other side at the point of impact look at this right at the point of impact it's an established place where you see the thing happening it's a planned event. The date was already set. The place was already known. There were already spirits present on that place even before the police, even before the ambulance. It was known in the atmosphere that somebody was going to lose his life on this particular place. So by the time the driver is taking off from Tare and another driver from here, it's a planned thing. They have to meet on the spot. Hmm. Have you ever thought, have you ever thought about the reason why we normally have tire bursts when you are approaching the bridge every time? When vehicles are approaching the bridge every time, most of the times, why when there is a place which is that dangerous and all of a sudden something happens from here? How does the, even the tire itself know? Who touched it? Who caused that to happen? So events I want you to understand they are really manipulated. Things are not just happening on their own. No. There is a force behind it. There are spirits behind the events that we see. Right on the spot. Can you imagine? Because if this person was going to delay even for 30 seconds, this head-on would have been avoided. This head-on would have been avoided. Which means at a time when the driver who is coming from here has to stop somewhere, maybe on a lay-by, he has to be taking this and that and so on. 
the other driver from the other side has, has also to stop for some reasons. Just waiting for each other to meet at the proper place. Everything there is calculated, whether you speed up or you slow down. It's already calculated. So you can't say, let me speed off so that I get to the place and then before the bus arrives. No. When you are speeding up, already you find out because it's because the bus is already close to the place. So you have to still meet at the place. So everything that you do trying to avoid the collision, you are actually heading towards the right place. And you are making efforts to make sure it happens right on the spot. So events are calculated. They don't just happen. Now I want to show you something in the book of Genesis chapter 6 because I just gave you something in appetizer last time and I told you that demons were not fallen angels. Fallen angels are not demons. Okay? And I know maybe some of you because you are smart, you wanted to find out before today. You go ahead, try to find out, do your own research. I will tell you where demons are coming from. But let's deal with chapter 6 of the book of Genesis first. Chapter 6 of the book of Genesis from verse number 1. If you can look at it again. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. As men began to multiply on the face of the earth, daughters were born unto them. Because daughters are the subject here. We are going to be talking about daughters and the sons of men. So as men began to multiply, daughters were born unto them. Verse number two. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. When the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair. They decided to take those daughters to themselves as wives. And these sons of God, there is a whole lot of debate as to whether these sons were physical human beings or they were angels of God. Okay. If they were angels of God, how are they able to marry and to reproduce and to multiply? So these sons of God, I believe, were the angels of God 